Yeah, well, Hannah is a mum. I came from Cardiff uh, in Wales and grew up there till I was 18. And I was just obsessed with sport from, I don't even remember when. Um, I wanted to be a tennis player initially. Probably luckily I didn't carry on with that career because I'm a little bit short probably for a tennis player, but yeah, I just loved sport. I loved competitiveness. Everything was a race. I had two older brothers and yeah, it was always a competition. Half the time they didn't even know they were having a competition, but I'd be racing uh, no matter what it was. And I sort of fell into sailing. On a family holiday, we used to go down to Cornwall, which is on the southwest coast of England. My brothers went on a sailing course, and I was seven at the time, and you had to be eight. And I was desperate to have a go. I was just like, what, they get to go sailing and I'm not allowed? And anyway, eventually, the year after, I had a go, and I just fell in love with this sport. I think as a young girl at eight, you know, I was sort of gung-ho, competitive, um, you know, didn't see any barriers as to why I couldn't achieve anything and, and yeah, fell in love with sailing and then realised you could race boats uh, and that was it, sailing and, and racing and competitiveness and, and the Olympic Games, which I'd actually watched when I was eight years old. I watched the Atlanta Olympics in 96 and just was blown away and that's, that's what I wanted to do. So I guess quite young, I, I had a good idea of what I wanted to do. I guess when you have a connection with the sea and the ocean, it's like nothing else, you know, it's such a calming, freeing space. Um, even just being near it, walking along the beach, um, listening to the waves, is, it is just the most incredible experience. So, yeah, I think life without the sea would be a lot different and pretty sad. It was probably when I was sort of 14, 15, um, and I was doing really well in the Optimist class, uh, which is a little bathtub type boat. I guess at that point, you know, on the global stage at the World Championships, kind of getting some really good results, that's probably when I felt like there's, there's something here and this, this, could be, this could be a career. And the path to the Olympics in the UK anyway was actually quite clear um, in terms of your results and, and how you get there. So. Um, yeah, because I was from a non, non-sailing family, I guess, it was really nice to have that clear pathway and so I knew what I had to do and, and kind of could just go and do it. Where are we this morning, Hannah? I don't know, actually, Lewis. Great question. <laughs> so where are we? <laughs> I've been really high. Yeah, OK. Do it, find out. Well, yeah, we will. I think they had some issues with the glass breaking early on, guys. Just careful. <laughs> yeah, London was mad, but we were surrounded by just these legends um, in our sport. In the same team, you know, we had Ben Ainsley, we had Ian Percy, we had Andrew Simpson, we had Paul Goodison. Um, we just had just endless, successful, incredible sailors to kind of look up to and learn from. The games is a bit of a circus like there's so much going on and it's it's can be quite distracting and overwhelming and our approach for London was definitely just absorb it and enjoy it and we definitely took that box. London getting the silver was actually really hard we we kind of won the silver two days before the end um, before the meta race and so it was kind of gold or nothing on the meta race day and and we didn't, we didn't execute at all. You just never know with an Olympics whether you're going to get another shot. It's four years till the next one. I didn't know if Saskia wanted to carry on. Uh, and it just felt like such an opportunity missed, uh, which we might never get again. But fast forward four years to Rio and we, we did qualify again. Uh, and the, the pressure we felt to win gold there was monumental. You know, London, we knew we had a chance of a medal. Rio, it was just all about the gold. I'd never forget the the relief, just the utter relief of like, it just felt like a thousand kilos had fallen off my shoulders and coming into the beach and my mum was out there with her sister and my cousin and it was just the best, the best feeling and, and then standing on the podium with Sass, 
With the gold medal, you don't, well, I didn't quite believe it was true until we had the gold medal around our neck and that moment of someone putting it on. Yeah, it's just incredible. Sport is really hard. There's there's so many up and downs. It's like life, you know, there's so many up and downs, but I guess the highs are so high that the lows kind of have to be pretty low. Before London, before I teamed up with SAS, I, I dropped out of university to kind of pursue the dream of going to London. I felt like I'd gambled pretty hard. You know, it was kind of almost 18 months of trying different people and not getting any results and, and questioning and just fighting every day to kind of learn and try and get better and just wait for that moment to come where suddenly the dream became alive again. Probably the other most difficult times are post-Olympics. You know, you've had the best six months of your life in the build-up to the Olympic Games and then doing the Olympic Games. Win or lose, I think, afterwards is, is kind of suddenly it feels like everything's gone. You know, all these are people that are supporting you. Um, the dream's gone, it's happened, good or bad. It's just a really weird time, kind of post-Olympic blues, I guess, uh, is kind of what everyone calls it. And that can go on for months and months. I think the message would be to my younger self when I was kind of just starting out or a few years into sailing is just keep that fire that makes you you. I think particularly for young girls, it can be really easy for that fire to get kind of squashed and for people to tell you that, you know, being loud and assertive and all of these things, is like, is particularly as a girl, isn't, isn't, isn't the norm. Um, and so I would definitely say just keep the fire. Hannah Mills is a legend in the sport. I mean, she's so inspiring, being a mom, a gold medalist, now at CLGP. Um, I think what she's doing in the sport is absolutely incredible. You know, I hope to be a mom one day, and I think it's just really inspiring to see her continue to do what she loves and also push boundaries in the sport. She's just an incredible role model for, you know, every athlete out there, whether you're a woman or a male. You know, having a daughter who's 18 months old uh, and trying to be the best athlete you can be. It's, yeah, it's really, really challenging. I have the most amazing fiance, Nick. We, we managed to make it work in that respect, but it's, it's still hard, you know. At the moment, for various reasons, I'm coming to the CLGP events without Nick and Sienna. Yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. Every time I leave, it, it, it is. It's really, really hard. You just, you just feel torn all the time that you're not doing enough for your athlete role or you're not doing enough for your daughter or you know it, it's yeah it's like all mums and dads everywhere you just feel constantly torn. I think Hannah is a big inspiration for a lot of young female athletes to just strive to be the best at whatever they do knowing that they can reach the top level at their sport or their career. Yeah it's amazing to watch Hannah and what she's achieved in the sport. Um, certainly CLGP attracts the best athletes in the planet and she definitely has earned her spot here and she's definitely an inspiration for all the women out there and little girls that look into having a future in sailing. CLGP so had kind of just got going. I remember two of our teammates, um, Dylan and Stu, uh, were doing the first season and I remember watching it and just being blown away by these boats and what these guys were getting to do. It was just so cool. After the pandemic kind of hit and so GP then kind of restarted, they launched the Women's Pathway Programme, which was just before the Tokyo Olympics. Um, and I was just, I couldn't believe it, you know, it was just like, oh my God, there's an opportunity here for female athletes to, to get involved in this type of sailing. And I tried out for the British team. Um, I got the spot, which was awesome. Um, but I'd kind of been planning to stop sailing after Tokyo and go more into sustainability and environmental um, work, which I've become really, really passionate about over that, that four year Olympic cycle. And CLGP came along with the Women's Pathway Programme and then all the purpose projects they were doing and the Impact League and suddenly it was just the perfect job that I could have. Mm -hmm.
Sailing on a professional level, trying to push forward for you know female sailors and, and create new opportunities for female sailors. But there was all the environmental stuff the Sail GP were doing. It was yeah, I was just I couldn't believe it. It kind of come at the perfect time for me. When I got onto Sail GP, I looked up to Hannah a lot just because of how successful she was in sailing and the way that she's paving this pathway for future mothers and the way that she's able to balance her career and family life so well. For me, what's really important about it is what underpins that, and that is all the the social and environmental projects that Sail GP run, you know, whether it's the Women's Pathway, the Inspire program, the Impact League and the Purpose projects that they do, like that is integral to the league. And I actually think that is why a lot of the sponsors want to partner with Sail GP is, is because, you know, no one's perfect um, and we don't just walk the walk. Yeah, they are talking the talk as well in many respects. So that as an athlete uh, just makes me really proud to be a part of the league. I 100% would want to drive a Sail GP boat, so I just think it's such a big step forward for our sport. Hopefully we have a 50-50 men and women team. I feel very lucky to, to have a different aspect of the family now and my mum.